you're finally ready to make the dive, to take the leap, to live in a foreign country like Japan. But that still doesn't mean that you don't have a million questions floating around inside your head. How can you do this the best way possible? This video is gonna give you an answer to five and give you a solid start to feeling more knowledgeable, more confident, more able to save money when you do move, and to not feel like a complete noob, completely out of your element when you arrive. So the clock is ticking, let's go. Number one, buying a car. You've been positioned in a location since moving over to Japan that requires that you actually have a vehicle and you've got to figure out what to buy. Now in the first case, you're in luck because the Japanese domestic market is saturated. So you're probably going to find vehicles here for much cheaper than you've ever found anywhere else. Now, that was especially true for me when I compared a cost comparison. It was about double what you could get here than what you would get back home. But because the market is saturated, this is a double-edged sword. When you buy the vehicle, be supremely confident that that is the vehicle that you want because when it comes to reselling the vehicle, again, because the market is so saturated, you're gonna get peanuts for it. You're gonna get absolutely nothing. So lesson one, answer one, when you buy a car, be confident that it's the one you want and don't get carried away by the fact that you can have something more expensive here. Try and be frugal, pick something out, no matter how excited you are, that you're gonna stick with for a long time. That's number one. Number two the Japanese car Shaken. The Shaken is a biannual car maintenance checkup that you have to do here in Japan for any vehicle that's registered. Resist the urge to have a company do this for you, even though that's what's popularly done here. The reason being that you're going to save about 50% on the cost if you do it yourself. And when the cost ranges from 40,000 yen to 60,000 yen and above, depending on the vehicle you have, you're going to save yourself a ton of money. I know what you're thinking, but I don't have any Japanese ability. I've done this three times now, and the first time I did it, my Japanese ability was basically absent, and I still got through. The people there are very, very helpful. You're gonna make it, you're gonna save a ton of money. Do the shocking yourself. That's number two. Number three, car resale. You didn't take my advice from answer one and you bought yourself the crazy car. You got the Nissan 350 GT Skyline that after a year of driving you realize the engine tax is too much, buying high arc fuel is horrible and you can't deal with it anymore. You want to change but you don't speak enough Japanese to sell to someone personally. What do you do? Car resale in Japan is possible through companies that essentially buy back the vehicle from you at a major loss but they are very, very useful when you don't have a mastery of the language to sell to a friend. I'm gonna list them down in the link below. You can use Rabbit, you can use Gulliver. I used Gulliver, and these guys will do a short little talk on the phone. Maybe if you have a friend, they can do it for you if you don't feel comfortable with it. It's very basic Japanese, the year of the car, the miles on the car, stuff like that. They will come and do a check at your house and then give you an assessment. I did this with a vehicle once and it actually worked out really well. And you can ask for more beyond the initial offer. It is possible to negotiate with these people. My recommendation as well is if you are pushed into this corner and you have to do this, try at least a couple of these companies. When I recommend Rabbit and Gulliver, try both of them and compare the quotes, use them against each other. Save yourself money on resale and put a few extra bucks in your pocket when you're trying to get something back. That's number three. Number four, getting packages that you miss the delivery of that you need right now without a huge headache associated with it or the fear of calling somebody when you don't yet have mastery of the language. So just like anywhere else in the world, if you miss getting this package delivered to you, there'll be an undelivered notice put through your door. In Japan, that notice is going to have a QR code on it. Scan that QR code and you'll be taken to a very basic web page that needs the most basic information when you want the package delivered, what your name is. Once you put in that information, you hit request and then you'll get the package on the same day and you won't have to have spoken to anyone. You save yourself a huge headache. So number four, scan the QR code on an undeliverable notice and you'll get your packages very simply and without any kind of hassle. Number five, how to get a phone contract when you're in Japan. 
Now this is easily top five most popular questions that I ever received through email, social media, down in the comments below in my videos, and I can understand why. Buying a phone without contract will run you about $800 to $1,000, whereas if you get one, you can get it for $0. It's a huge investment for a lot of people, especially when they're footing the bill for moving to another country. So what do you do? Whether it's walking into AU, Docomo, SoftBank, any of these different providers that you have here in Japan, the first answer should not be the only answer that you receive, unless it's the one you want. People make the mistake of thinking that just because it says the company name on the door, that down the street, it's going to be the exact same answer. A lot of these shops are actually franchised, and the final decision whether or not this person will be given the contract falls as a responsibility to that franchise. So even though it says Docomo and Docomo, you could get two totally different answers. And a lot of people not realizing that sit down, feel like they have only one choice, and then pay all that money. So when you go into one of these stores, if they don't give you the answer that you're looking for, go to the next store. And if not there, go to the next store. I did this with when I came and I had to do it a little bit, but I eventually met with the success that I wanted, which was a contract and it saved me a ton of money. And you can save that money too, just with a little bit of perseverance. So that's number five. There you have it. Five essential life hacks for when you're just coming over to Japan and you want to make the transition a little smoother for yourself along the way. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I certainly enjoyed making it. You can help people now, because I've only answered five things to make life a little easier, by writing your suggestions down below in the comments. What do you think is a great thing that people should know when they first arrive? We'll all benefit. Let's help each other out. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.